Hello everybody and welcome back to Project Storm. I'm Storm and today we have another little tutorial video. Should be easy, should be simple, but I noticed that many people don't know these things about planes. So we're going to be going over tail design, wing design, and wing placement, and, well, tail placement. Very simple things on planes, but they are very important. So, as you all know, the aerodynamics tab and the forces tab are very important, and I actually have a little template vehicle here where I can test out all the different wing designs that we're going to be going over today. So, for one, what you want to do first is you want to realize where you have to place your wings. Usually, you want to place them towards the top of your build, ne not really near the bottom. Think of it as buoyancy, but backwards. Think of it like if you have a balloon on top of something holding it up versus if you have a balloon be below something and you're trying to make that balloon hold it up. What's that balloon going to do? It's going to float right back up and wrap around and go upside down, right? Sometimes it is very useful to make a wing design like this. If you want to put your wings at the bottom, this is used for many World War II planes. They did this a lot. And you will have to tilt them up to a degree like that. Okay, put one here. Make it look nice, you know, it doesn't have to look nasty. <laughs> place our wing, boom. And then place our aileron, sorry. Boom. There we go. Bam. And then do the same to the other side. The wings are a little stubby because, well, I'm trying to get through as many as I can. Oh. But it should be easy enough. Okay. Now let's try it out. Boom. Okay. So let me fly it as if it was just these. So there is some stability. But you'll start to notice on turns like this have a little bit of instability if I turn this on it will be a little bit better but you'll notice a lot more maneuverability and this is because well straight wings they're straight they don't take up much uh, horizontal space so what straight wings do is they allow your plane to go through that maximum turn radius very easily because there's not much drag on that top face right here so these types of wings are good for low speed dog fighting but not really high speed because at high speeds you'll just flip I can't show you this now but what I mean by high speeds is 600 to 700 miles per hour or more so we're gonna go down and give this a test with swept wings now swept wings are a little bit more fun I like them a little bit more and swept wings are good for fast, agile, but stable movement. So we're going to do something like this. And for most wings, I usually love to have them near the top of the plane. Like this. So on the very top block level. And I only have this third block here because we're going to be going over biplanes. For monoplanes, life is easy. Life is simple. All you got to do... Is slap a couple of wings on there and that's literally it just two that's it once you do you're golden provides excellent stability excellent maneuverability with biplanes planes needed more lift to carry their engines and well not much was known about aerodynamics at all so they needed two wings for stability and well just to get off the ground very interesting times don't quote me on that. I probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's what I imagine would happen. So we have our little design here for our swept wings. We can put in pretty much this, a small modular wing. Bam, right there. And now we place some little um, stability measures. Okay, so I had someone say hey, what if you don't have the DLC packs, any of them? So none of the paddles, none of the sails. Um, what I would do is I would try my best to hide certain aerodynamic pieces in your plane. So what I would do is I would do something like this. We place a two piece right here. Take this off. Boom. And then you place a piston down here. 
and then let me take forces off so you can see this what this piston is going to do is it's going to piston glitch your piece that you're going to use for stability into your plane so the piece that i would use that gives you the most bang for your buck at the smallest level you could honestly glitch a bunch of these in there so i would do something like this Okay, if you can avoid the weld groups, that's what you would try to do. And that should be good enough, so you hide a little aerodynamic piece, and then what you do is you take the rest of these blocks and you just fill it in. It doesn't matter. All I ask and beg that you do is do not spam wing pieces. That causes some instability that you probably won't be able to come back from. But as many, like, use a good amount of wing pieces. Don't use this. This is like not the best wing piece placement for right now, but I'm doing this on a very small scale. All you should do is have enough wing pieces to get you off the ground and keep you stable in flight and not be falling out of the sky. That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, we copy this over. Boom. Okay, we're back. Finally. Huh, this thing kind of looks like that one German plane that I'm not going to say the name of. Okay. And we're up. And boom. Okay. So right off the bat, not enough lift. But my tail is giving me a good amount of pitch power. Now, I'm not as fast. But you'll see now that my turns are much more stable. They're much more controlled. Everything is like that now. And, well, that's because of the large wingspan and a little bit more surface area on the horizontal plane. But now, I'm going to go through the last wing type, which is Delta, other than biplane, of course. Okay, Delta wings. Easy enough. Quite simple. Okay, for those who don't know, Delta wings are used by fighter jets like the F-22, the F-16, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So, you want a more harsh curve, or a harsh angle, on the front, easy enough. And for sweat wings, you really just want a gentle curve on the front, and then a curve inward, and then a gentler curve all the way back. We have our harsh angle here, then we have our inward angle here, and now we're going to put in our gentle angle. And there we go. Connect it up. Oop. Connect it up. And connect all these up. So all you have to do is just place these. General wing management, just making wings. It's, it's an interesting art, but you will get used to it in time. We're gonna hide one of our little things here so that I don't leave out people who don't have DLCs because I've been there, I know exactly how it feels when people make tutorials with while using DLCs, it's very annoying. And that's your Delta Wing. It's a very small, disproportionate Delta Wing, but that's a Delta Wing. So now we're gonna copy it over and boom. We have a Delta Wing aircraft. Actually, this is way too small. One second. <laughs> and for this, it may look a little ugly. Sorry, I had to make the Delta Wings a little bit bigger. It may look ugly, but if you don't have DLCs, this is about the best you can do to get that maximum stability. This will, I'll put a disclaimer out, this will lower your turn time. But it will add stability. So if you have problems with wobbling or spinning out, ah yes, speaking of spinning out, place your, I, I know, this is a given, Place your horizontal center of drag, or vertical center of drag, all the way in the back, as far back as possible. And I'll tell you why, unlike most people. Okay, so what happens when you have your center of vertical drag near the center is think of it, like I said, well, this time not as balloon. Think of it as this, okay. So you're going forward, right? Wind is pressing into you at this rate. It's, it's going into you like that. Okay, now let's think about this, right? If you're moving that way, where's all the air eventually gonna get to? 
the back of your vehicle, right? Okay, now, if we think about this more, if you're moving this way and you want to stay straight and you turn a little bit to the left, let's say, and you wanna stay straight, all of that air is now gonna be facing this way, hitting the very back because all of that air is gonna go to the very back. Once it hits the very back, it'll force you back in place. Let's say the tail was in the middle. Now let's do the same scenario. You turn left. Now all that air is hitting this tail from this angle. But what happens? You get pushed. You don't get corrected. You get pushed and you start to spin out. Let's make another minor adjustment. So I'll put in another word. There is an easier way to make um, ailerons. You can use the small elevator fins and you can input them so that you have flaps. So this is how it'll work the input. On the side that you are looking at, let's say you're on PC, the side that is facing upward on the elevator flap, so that would be red, would be D, since we are on the right side and D is the corresponding thing for the right side. So then you would input the opposite for the other side. Crank that speed up a little bit and then do the same for the other side. Now with elevator fins, they don't inverse, so you have to do the same thing to the other side. All right, let's try it out. And we are moving nice and fast. And as you see, our pitch is very slow. This is an interesting factor with Delta Wing aircraft. Oh, and as you see, there it is. So as you see here, we have a Delta Wing aircraft and I will tell you the pitch is gonna be extremely slow. Let me place these tail fins in the very back. I'll prove my point later. The pitch is gonna be extremely slow. And this has been an interesting thing. I uh, watched a couple of videos and apparently the only reason that aircraft can use this design and be like really good at using it, be agile, fast, and very, I guess, well put together in terms of how fast they move, how they can put your nose, their nose on something, is because they are actually built to be unstable. They're using so much thrust, they're going so fast that this wing, this wing design pr provides more benefit than downfall. Swept wing aircraft were about as far as they went with the horizontal plane. And that's because at higher speeds, this wing design becomes way more effective because it's like an arrow, right? So the aerodynamics just seem sound. But at lower speeds, you have insane pitch time, which is not insane in a bad way, <laughs> I should say. And now I'll prove my point about the tail fin thing. This is why you should always put your tail fins in the back because they will do something like this, what I'm about to show you. All right, we fly around, get some height, do a couple of barrel rolls, and immediately I'm unstable. So now what this is doing is no matter what direction I'm going in, if I am flat spinning, that tail fin is going, well, not even tail fin, that middle fin is going to be pushing me along into the flat spin still. See, like this. I'm not touching anything. Think of it like a spinning top. And this is where the spinning top has its little pin. But if you put it back here, it can't spin as well. It's almost like a ski now. So that's pretty much it. Last thing I'll do is biplane. Okay, biplane, easy. Boom. Boom. Bam. 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 And then we play some struts. Why not? And back in the day, you could place like guns here, gun pods here, but uh, not anymore. That's too small. All right, let's try it out. Now look at that. Oh, I may have placed them too high. Okay, so. Yeah, this is going to give you some insane lift potential. Okay. I placed these very wrong. 
But uh, yeah, the uh, the pitch is insane at low speeds. Let me move these back, actually. I'm gonna see if I can perfect this design. Not a traditional biplane design, but still a biplane. It has two wings. <laughs> and now that's a little bit better. We have more speed and really good lift, really good roll, really good pitch. And we will be able to come out of pretty much any low speed maneuver with this wing design. Biplanes are incredible for low speed dogfighting. So if you just want to turn circles in the sky while fighting someone, well then, now you can do that. Very easy too. Wow, this this thing is awesome. Yeah, biplanes, biplanes are not to be slept on. If you get them to an advanced level, they will be insane for dogfights. And there I go. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know I did. And if you want another tutorial soon, please be free to ask me. Tell me what you want to see next. I currently have a giant list, so I'm trying to get through them as fast as possible. But with school starting, you know, it's a whole thing. And I might not be able to get to most of them in time. But if you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you want to see next. And thank you all for watching. Remember, be awesome, people. We're all trail makers, so keep on creating. Peace.